two must-haves if you're buying a new Tacoma or building one. everybody how are you today pretty good here and that's right here are two must-have things if you do nothing else whether you're just buying a new Tacoma you know like off the lot or whether you're building one these are two must-haves that everybody should include I think now I came across these of course when I built my Tacoma and it was built last year I ordered it I spec'd it out and these two things came up and I gotta tell you for the money, you can't beat them, you know, and I'm all about doing stuff yourself, right? I mean, I do a lot of mods and things on the channel. I have the war wounds to uh, to show that I do my own work, but sometimes there are things that you really, you can't do them yourself for any cheaper, uh, probably going to cost you more for that matter, then you can just go ahead and have them included. And again, this doesn't matter whether you're buying the truck off the lot or having it built and ordered. So the first one, and I've whipped out my handy dandy sticker here just to make sure that I get things right. But the first one is the cargo bed light. You know, this came up and I had even thought, because I was aware of this as well as the other one I'm gonna mention, that I could add them after the fact and it might be a cool video to do for the channel, right? And probably would have been a cool video to do for the channel, but I'd be kind of hypocritical, I guess, if I got behind something and told you guys that you should do it yourself and then I went ahead and, you know, ordered it. <laughs> so that's why I didn't do that. I just couldn't justify it myself, you know? So the cargo bed light, it costs $179, $179. Now I would venture to say that by the time you went out, and this is if you're going with the OEM stuff. I mean, obviously, you can buy cheaper things. Heck, you could probably put a lamp back there if you wanted to. You know, something you have sitting around in that bedroom that you're never using. But I'm talking about going with OEM stock parts. And I would guess that if you tried to buy this thing yourself, and then any supplies or tools that you might need to do it, it would end up costing you probably more money than if you just went ahead and had Toyota do it when you're picking up the truck or if you're ordering it. And that's why I did it. I just thought, you know, for 179 bucks, I can't beat this. I can't do it myself for that. Nor would I tell anybody else to do it themselves for that. Just doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, the other one is uh, the power tailgate lock. And you know, there's the big aftermarket one out there. Everybody knows them, right? The pop and lock. You can get that, put it in yourself, but man, you gotta run wire from the front to the back. You have to tap into a wire over there behind the panel on the passenger side. And if you don't have a lift, you know, I'm fortunate, I have a lift. But if you don't, well then you gotta be crawling around under the truck and you know, ripping apart the panel. I mean, it's just a lot of hassle for the price. And what is the price? 289 bucks. You know, the pop and lock, I know it's cheaper to buy that than pay the $289, but again, it's just a kind of a hassle to do yourself when for 289 bucks, you can just go ahead and have the dealer, you know, put it in when you're picking up the truck or spe especially when you're when you're building it. And by the way, I don't know if anybody knows, but when you're buying the truck, when you're building it rather, those accessories are added away from the factory. They're added at the port. They're not done at the factory. So it's not like they can't be done independent of, of having it built, I guess, of having it done at the same time you build it. And that's what the dealership is gonna do. They're gonna farm it out. Now, they're not gonna farm it out to the port, you know, where the truck comes in, uh, but they are gonna farm it out somewhere else. There's a chance they might have their own people do it, but. I find in most cases, they send it out to some sort of an accessory shop and have them go ahead and do it. So anyway, the cargo or the tailgate lock rather, 289 bucks. And you know, when you're looking at the grand scheme of things, again, I, I whipped out the old sticker here. Um, the sticker on this truck was 42,000. 
$778. So we're talking about $179 and $289. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, you know, gee, does it really make that much difference? I don't think so. And I think, again, that the time to do it is definitely when you're buying or building the truck. And if you're, if you're doing that, uh, chances are you can have it thrown in either in the form of an added accessory if the truck is already on the lot or in dealing on the price of the truck once you build it and have it brought in. And while I'm talking about that, a few people have asked me, you know, hey, when you build a truck, do you have to pay the full price for it? Well, of course not. I mean, it's really no different than if the inventory manager is sitting at his desk and he's building a truck, right? I mean, when they order these, they build what they think will sell for their area. And then they place the order much the same as what you or I would do if we were specking it out ourselves. Of course, the difference is, is I'm going to spec out what I want specifically. And that inventory manager is, is going to spec out something that he thinks is going to sell quicker on the lot. Because let's face it, that's what they're in business to do. They're in business to sell them as fast as possible on the lot. So when the truck comes in, that's the time, at least for me, that I sit down and, and dicker on the truck, if you will, because the dealership has already bought the truck and you're not committed. The other big uh, fallacy out there, I, I think, is that when you put a deposit down on the truck, you are committed. Not really. That deposit is fully refundable. And make sure that you get that in writing once you order the truck. And if the dealership that you're dealing with tells you that that is a non-refundable deposit, then go to the next dealer. I have never been at a dealership uh, and looking to build a vehicle where the dealership has told me my deposit is not refundable. That's insane. Because let's face it, if the truck comes in and you don't want it, the dealership is gonna sell it. They're gonna recoup their money anyway. And there's really nothing out there that's so specific that they're not gonna be able to sell the truck. In other words, you're not gonna create some sort of a, a unicorn that only you are going to be interested in buying, right? I mean, all of the options that you're going to add to that truck are available for anyone to add. So don't let them tell you that. And again, if you have a dealership that's, that's trying to tell you that, leave leave. Uh, it's just not true. So anyway, I just wanted to get on here. I think those are two really inexpensive and useful or handy options uh, that you can go ahead and have the dealership add or add when you build the truck that cost next to nothing, especially compared to the overall cost of the truck. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about that. I'd be curious did you have those added to your truck? If you've bought one recently, maybe dealt with it at the dealership or even when you place the order, I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I have two additional channels. The first is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. And the second is Rob Motive Civic, all about my experiences with the Honda Civic Type R and the Honda Civic Sport Hatch. Check them out. If you like them, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.